And we're back with Broward County Commissioner Stacy Ritter. Thanks for being with me, Stacy. Thanks, Francis. We're going to talk about the new ethics code in Broward County and how it will improve public confidence in city and county government and also the new prospects of the new courthouse in Broward County and the expansion of the Fort Lauderdale International Airport and the budget needs and all that. But first, I've got with me on the phone uh, Bob Norman from New Times. So good morning, Bob. Good morning, Barry. Can How are you me? doing? Yeah, we can hear you okay. So yeah, I can't hear you real well, so... Well, all right, we'll just, have to, it, we'll just have to speak up, but uh, what's going on in your end of the world? Well, it's coincidence has that I've been writing about none other than Commissioner Stacy Ritter. Uh-oh. Not you. all that uncommon for me, but, you know, she's one of my, she's in my rotation. But, uh, I think I'm the only one in your rotation, actually. Uh, yesterday, put up a, an amendment that basically strips, will strip, the Inspector General, the new ethics are, <laughs> of most of that uh, position's powers. And she did it in a very sneaky <laughs> way, um, where it's going to go on the ballot that the people Ooh. aren't know what they're voting on. And basically, let me just give a quick background on this whole thing. The voters mandated that the county commission, which, you know, has two commissioners already knocked off the commission because of criminal charges, and a couple, including, according to my legal sources, Stacey Ritter, are under a criminal investigation right now. Um, they've been racked with corruption allegations. The people said, put some ethics into this board. Ever since that was passed, the commission has tried to gut it in devious ways. They tried to, you know, quietly get it uh, deemed unconstitutional. That fell apart when the public became outraged. I guess it wasn't they so quiet since you heard about it. <laughs> that fell apart when the public became outraged. But yesterday, Ritter was able to get her amendment passed. That basically yeah. strips the inspector general, which will be created as part of this. Well, the press release that they sent out from the county investigate what he wants. said that they unanimously approved the ethics code and, and that she was able to pass that. Yeah, I got the press release from the county right there. Yeah, I passed it unanimously. In a very sneaky way. Apparently not sneaky. No, I, I was saying, that, Bob, Bob, that I got a press release from Kimberly Moreau, who I know is the public information manager for Broward County, and in that she issued a press release indicating that that amendment passed unanimously by the county commission. The Ritter Amendment? Yes. Yes, it was. But it was the Ritter Amendment. It was her amendment. So it was a devious amendment. When Ooh. the voters go to the Bob. ballot in November... They are not going to know what they're voting on. What they're voting on is, is, is to strip the inspector general of the opportunity to investigate what he wants to, he or she, to investigate based on newspaper reports, which has been the lifeblood of anti-corruption in Broward County and, and basically America, uh, dating all the way to Watergate and beyond. Uh, and I'd like to hear Ritter's responses. I want to know why you don't think, why you don't want the inspector general to be able to investigate what he wants to. It says that you're going to Gee, point a committee right Bob, there. Bob, it's so nice to hear your voice. Um, <laughs> That's what it's glad saying. you're glad you're with us. I I'm a little surprised at your indignation. How sneaky could it be if you found out about it? How devious could I be? It was a public meeting where the where the where the charter change and it's not an amendment by the way. It's a separate charter proposal was put up weeks ago for anybody and everybody to read. But I think you give it, actually, I think Bob Norman gives me more credit than I'm due for being devious and sneaky. But um, this is a charter change, which is actually stronger than a simple ordinance. And the voters get to vote on it. And um, I don't understand what the big deal is. You get someone who wants. You know, Stacy? Well, I've got a lot of questions for you, Stacy. I can't hear you very well, though. I can't hear you or Barry. There's a serious problem with the. Uh with the audio. Well, Bob, I know you got my cell phone number, so anytime you want to call me, and you know you got my office number, so don't hesitate to call. I know you don't. I know you like to write about me, but you never call. And God, you never write. Well, I've so my emails please never call me, write, write me. I'm asking back. you. I'm begging you. Don't write about me without at least asking me. Well, but um, here, here's the deal yeah, with the Inspector it says it right General here. in particular. You get different people appointed by the committee. Well, 
It's a selection committee. Right. And um, it's a charter change. That's really important. It's a charter change. The voters get to vote on it. And Broward doesn't have an office of inspector general right now. Palm Beach County has an office of inspector general. Miami they Dade has, in. has an inspector general. They seem to be working very well in both counties. Broward needs an inspector general that can that can investigate complaints of malfeasance, misuse of public funds, public resources. Uh, the county commission has nothing to do with um, selecting the inspector general. It'll be done in an open process because it's government. It has to be done in an open process. It's a, an appointment by the mayor of Broward County, by the state attorney, by the public defender of Broward County. They'll meet, they'll interview, they'll hire an applicant. Uh, they'll hire someone who will then have an office with auditing functions as well as investigor investigatory fun functions. Once the auditor receive, once the investigator receives a complaint, and yes, it ha you got to put your name on it. I'm sorry. I know how much the media loves these anonymous bloggers, but if you don't have the guts to put your name on a complaint, then maybe you shouldn't be filing one. The ethics commission requires you to hey, sign hey, a complaint. Yeah, really the elections bad. commission I'm requires to sign a complaint. It's very bad. Bob. I don't know if I can get rehooked up. Or Bob, we, we can't get a hold of you. We're going to have to get you on Skype, but unfortunately, uh, Stacy's trying to explain what the amendment is and the charter change is and what the voters are going to vote on, and I'm sorry that uh, you can't respond because you, know you can't hear that well. Gary, let me just, to, to let your viewers know, the amendment also gives the county the, the right to go after complainants for investigative and legal fees if they're wrong or if they're determined to be malicious. Which, by the way... The clear attempt by the commission in the name of Stacy Ritter to intimidate whistleblowers. By the way... No question about that. Bob, you may not know this. She stripped the power of the inspector general. Okay. And she put the onus on the and then you do your All right. Who, if they're wrong... You know, they're in trouble. Bob, I know you may not know this because I know your research skills are kind of shoddy. Basic, but I um, I don't know here's the deal. The ethics... Co that's what she did. And she did it because she's married to a lobbyist. Why would I... Her entire political career has been based <laughs> on these shenanigans from the get-go. Okay. Now, can Going I... Back to 1996 when she first ran for office and left her family for Russell Clinette, the lobbyist. Well, Bob, let her, let her finish her point. I guess. I can't hear anything. Well, maybe we should, you know, let him finish. Okay, Bob. We're, we're going to let Stacy. We're going to let Stacy finish her point, and next week we're going to hopefully get you fixed up with Skype so we can see you as well as hear you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Well. And then I'll go on to. First this. of all, you know, to some of his points, um, which are not well researched. Uh, current, the Florida Ethics Commission, which has been in existence for a very long time, also requires malicious, pro if, if, if the complainant is malicious and it is dismissed without cause, they also assess legal fees for the person who was, who was being complained against for no reason. So it's not like we made this up and pulled it out of thin air. We actually researched this. Unlike some people, we read it. We researched it. And, and we determined that unanimously that the best thing to do was require a verified complaint. And you know, it's funny to listen to Bob Norman complain about that. One of the reasons we did it this way was because my colleague Sue Gunsberger earlier this summer was the um, was the brunt of an anonymous complaint filed to the Broward Sheriff's Office about something that happened 20 years ago when her husband was alive doing business with the county. And nobody could find out the source of that complaint. And for several weeks while she was in the midst of a very heated campaign and it was clearly politically motivated, she was the brunt of bloggers and people saying she had done something illegal, something unethical, but nobody could find out who made the complaint. The investigation was since closed. In fact, Bob Norman himself wrote that it was an utterly worthless complaint and shouldn't have been done. So he has made my point for me. All right, well, they let should me, be verified. So let me go on to three or four points real quickly. Uh, if you could just briefly explain the ethics code and how it works and how will it improve public confidence in county government? Well, we're very hopeful that it will improve public confidence in county government. Um, it's very strict. No gifts, no food, no drink. Um, there are some additional reporting requirements, financial reporting requirements. Uh, we'll have to now um, make a log of who we speak to. You know, at the county, when you see somebody, they have to sign in. Right. But when you're talking to someone on your cell phone, which happens all the time these days, you don't have to keep a log. We'll be keeping a log of who we speak to, who does business at the county, and what we talked about. It'll be much more open, much, much more transparent. And I got to tell you, coming from the legislature, the county is a lot more open than 
the Florida legislature is. People don't see it, but I can tell you, from my perspective, it is. But this will even make it more open and more transparent. And I hope the voters will choose to put an inspector general in Broward County come November, because it's the right thing to do. And you got a couple of prospects going on, uh, a new courthouse and the expansion of the airport. How will that affect the quality of life and jobs and tourism? Well, we're really um, we're really happy that both those projects are coming online. The runway um, has been stalled since, I think, for, it's been 20 years that the runway's been stalled, and that's a multi-billion dollar project. It's a construction project. You know, the construction industry's just ground to a complete halt in Broward County in South Florida, put people to work. It'll also increase the ability to have people come here. You know, at FLL, our airport, we only have one working runway. Um, you can't have dual landings, you can't have dual takeoffs, and that clogs the system. Time is money for the airlines. You gotta get people in, you gotta get people out. And it'll bring more people here in a more efficient manner. The courthouse, you know, our courthouse, gosh, I, I moved here in 1974, 75. The courthouse was old back then. That was in 71. Um, it's leaking, it's moldy, there are rats. We need a new one. Um, we're being sued over it by several court, uh, employees at the courthouse, and we need a new one desperately, and that will also put people to work. Have you uh, solved the problem of the objection of some of the Dania residents on the new runway, or are they still opposed to it? It's a handful of residents who are directly impacted, but the county's working on noise mitigation. Um, we're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars on each homeowner's home, depending on where they're located, to, in, to, to, to soundproof their homes. That's and good. We're hoping that that will at least help most of them. There will still be a handful. Well, as with every other government, uh, Broward County government also has some budgetary needs. Are you going to be you going to have to raise taxes or cut jobs, or what's going to happen with the budget? I don't think the county is going to raise taxes. Um, we just don't think that in this economy. Cut services then. Unfortunately, and and what we do because we have so few residents that are actually that actually live in Broward County. They all, most everybody lives in a city in Broward, unlike Miami Dade, which is half unincorporated. We don't do potholes, and we don't you know we don't uh, pick up garbage. Those are not the kind of things the county does. But we run the parks, we run the library system, uh, we fund the sheriff's office as well as the other constitutionals, and they're all going to have to take a hit because we just don't think in this economy you raise people's taxes. Well, speaking of the sheriff, do you think that the uh, he should share in the percentage uh, reduction that we need with the county? You know, the sheriff takes about half of uh half of the revenue um, about half goes to the, the sheriff's budget when you when you get when you're a Brad County resident and you get your taxes it says Brad County if you're paying a thousand dollars in taxes half of that goes to the sheriff's office you just don't see that because of the line item on your taxes and I think the majority of commissioners believe that if he can't get to half you know whatever the cut number is he needs to take half of that he can he can certainly get closer the county has offered suggestions so far they've been met with a deaf ear we had the uh, sheriff of Palm Beach County speak at my West spoke at chamber breakfast yesterday morning and he was talking about the same thing and he says we're cutting everywhere we can cutting out all kinds of stuff but he's not going to cut taking patrolmen off the road no and cut services like that Broward so county would never do that same situation except that if you look at the Broward Sheriff's Office budget there's a lot of very top-heavy command staff departments in fact there are some departments where there are six people working the department four of them are brass and two of them are workers um, you don't a lot of chiefs and not enough Indians a lot of chiefs, a lot of chiefs. <laughs> well thank you so much much for being with me, Stacy. I appreciate Thanks, you coming and enjoyed having you with me. Me too. Thanks, Thanks very a lot. Much. And